Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to use World Machine and World Painter to make uh, maps, snow mountain maps that look like this. Now this will only be a tutorial on the snow itself. I have other tutorials uh, going over generating terrain in World Machine and exporting that to World Painter. So this is just going to focus on how to put this snow kind of overlay on it using both those programs. Now you can just do snow in World Painter but it won't look nearly as good as this, I can guarantee you. Um, to do it, like, right, you have to use World Machine as well. And it's actually easier to do than you might think, but there is a lot of specific stuff you have to know. And I think when you do it this way, the snow looks way better than it would if you did it uh, just using World Painter. So yeah, now... The first thing I'll do is go into World Machine. So now that we're in World Machine, I have this uh, test map pretty much prepared for this video. And I'll be linking this map as well as the World Painter project in the description of the video. Um, so you can download and mess with it yourself. But So on the left side here, this all this here, we basically have a simple uh, mountain terrain. And I'll show you what that looks like. now. Um, if we go here, um, you can make all this using the tutorial I've posted already, so I'm not going to go over how to do this. Um, I have a tutorial on how to use all of these things here, and you can apply the snow stuff to any map you want. So on the right here, we have the snow, all of this. So we're going to be, the video is going to focus on this half of the map. So as you notice... The main thing I'm using is this snow device. It's under natural and it's just snow. And this has four inputs and two outputs. I sometimes use all four or all six of these. Sometimes I only use three like shown here. I'll explain all of that. The other thing you'll notice is there's three outputs um, for this. And I'll explain those briefly and then go into more detail later. So this output overlay view that just shows the snow overlaid on the map. You need this in order to see the snow. So it's very important. This one is your height output for the map. It's just for the terrain without any snow. And this one is a bitmap output. It's not a height map and it's basically an image of the snow. And that that all of these, both of those you'll be inputting into World Painter later. And I'll explain how to do that eventually. But so the first thing you'll notice is the snowfall intensity. Now, I always have this connected to a curve to the main map. And the reason is, um, usually I want more snow in certain areas of the map than others. Um, so in this case, um, the curve, um, basically it, it makes it so more snow falls in the lower areas than it would otherwise. Because otherwise, I, I felt in this case there isn't enough snow there. And it kind of gets more even as it gets uh, higher up. So there's a lot of snow higher up. N and basically this just should directly show how much snow there is in each area. There's a, This map has a lot of snow, but not too much because a lot of it melts. So if you wanted less, you can mess with this. You can have even more snow at the top, less snow at the bottom. It's really up to you. As usual with World Machine, I'd highly suggest playing with everything and figuring out what works best for your map. So also I should mention uh, this snow has, um, you can uh, adjust the snowfall. There's also some presets, but I typically just use the default. And this is basically how much snow there is. There's a lot in this case, 238.6.8 meters. And the stickiness basically tells you how much the snow sticks to stuff. In this case, I just have it off. You may want it on if you have more jagged rock faces that you want to have snow on them. And the snow melt mask, if you're using the snow melt input, which I'm not, this will change the intensity of it. So I'll go over that next. So if you want uh, more snow melt, what I do is I have this inverter and this curve. Now what those do, um, is the inverter first of all it inverts the map so it makes it so there's more snow melt in the low areas because all the high areas become low areas in the map so it basically makes it so there's more snow melt in the lower areas then the curve kind of adjusts that slightly so there's uh 
a bit more snow melt as it goes up than there would otherwise be basically or as it goes down it's kind of confusing because it's backwards so this is what the curve looks like it's almost linear just with a bit higher on the low end if you input that to the snow map and look at the overlay view you'll see that there's a bit less snow than there would be without it and I like it more without it which is why I don't have it on in this case and I should also mention the first input is the height field. That one's pretty simple. It just directly comes from the height field of your map. And all of these come directly from the height field of your map. Again, you don't have to have a flow restructure here. This is just from whatever final output your map has for the height. The snow goes, basically the snow, it adds on to the final height. So you want this at the end of the map, not anywhere else. So that's for the snow melt intensity. And finally for the mask input, I have a very simple one here. I just selected uh, the height from uh, 2.55 kilometers to 5.1 kilometers. And it basically just selects this area. And that makes it so there's more snow uh, kind of in the middle of the map where I want it than on the outsides. And say you want a biome that has snow, like say you just want this area to have snow, you could make it uh, use like a... Uh, oh, what's it called a shapes you can make a shape for just that area and just have this area have snow if you want that area to be kind of like a snow biome and in this case though I just uh, have the whole map as it but that's an option you can do with the mask input so so now after we move on to our outputs, so the snow has two outputs, a snow depth height field and a primary output height field. This is just a height field. Like I said, it's exactly the same as this, but with the snow added on top of it because the snow adds thickness to the map, right? So that goes to your overlay view and to your height output. Now the overlay view is um, this one and you basically connect the snow to the first input and then you connect this to the other input now uh, this is the snow depth output and you can see here it's very dark with just a few light spots and that is not good enough to output you won't be able to see anything at all so what we what I have here is an expander now this just expands anything from 0 to 120 meters which is all those really dark areas you saw and it blows them up so now it looks like this and that's what's really going on in the map you just couldn't see it earlier so it's, this is very important you have to have it from 0 to around 120 otherwise your snow just won't look right in the output so you take the output from that and you put one into the overlay input now for this you want to have blend colors of mask and the mask ambient on 1.0 and that'll let you see the snow like this now for your height output, that just directly comes from that height output. And finally, uh, for your bitmap output, you take the output from here and put it into a color. And now the color is in this case white for snow, but you could use any color you wanted. And that just goes directly into your bitmap output. Now the bitmap output is an, just like the height output, it's a PNG image. And it basically has, it's an image of this basically it looks like this and your height output is a normal height PNG image and you just make want to make sure you name them different things so I named that Veroni test map snow and this one is Veroni test map PNG and finally what you're gonna do is just build it pretty much um, so like I said uh, you can go through and mess with all this except maybe this and this one and these outputs are very important to have like that uh, otherwise you could screw some stuff up but all of this stuff you could do whatever you want with um so yeah i'm gonna build it and i will get back to when it's done building uh so now we're back after it built took quite a bit of time but uh whatever so Next thing to do is uh, output is save these outputs. So for this one, you just want to click write output to disk. And 
Sometimes it takes a bit. Yep, it should not responding. And it said it was done. So again, same with this one. Just click right to disk. And that's all you need to do for those. So now we can go into World Painter and import all that stuff we just outputted. So here we are in World Machine, or World Painter, sorry, and we're just going to import New World from Height Map. Uh, click the one we just did. Uh, that's the snow, we don't want that. So here's the actual height map, and here's the snow one. We want to use the actual one. Uh, just going to set that. Again, we want it 4,000 by 4,000, so we're going to set 50%. And, yeah, that's about it. So, as I showed in the intro, I'm going to be doing it very basic just to accentuate the snow, basically. So, uh, first, let's remove um, those things you don't want on the edges. So just go around here. And click remove tiles. So now um, I'm going to be doing a global operation, fill with terrain type. And I'm going to do gray stained terracotta since it's pretty dark. And the water level is kind of messed up here. So. Yeah, I'll just not worry about the water level for this map, but to import the other thing, you go to import, uh, mask or terrain or layer, and then you're going to go to your snow image, and it's going to take a bit, but again, you want to scale it the same thing you scaled it when you imported the original map, um, which is 50%, and, and then... You want to do it as annotations, merge, mapping one to one. And you'll import the mask. And as you can see here, it's a bit weird. There, it imported all of it as annotations, but there's various colors. So instead of that, we just want to put white annotations on everything. So go in here and look closely. We have white annotations, gray annotations, cyan, brown, and green. So we're just going to cover those all with white. So you go pencil only on green annotations and click and it did that. So now we only want gray annotations. So now it did that. Now we only want brown annotations. And you don't have to do all of these. Say you didn't want, you wanted a bit less snow, you could just ignore say the green annotations since they're at the edge. And uh, now we want cyan annotations. And there's that. So if you notice, it's a bit cut off along the height. That's because I had that uh, mask input cutting it off at a certain height. You don't need that, obviously. But this is just as a demo. You can mess around with this however you want. But this is what it looks like once you have um, all the annotations set to white so I would suggest leaving it like this because it's nice having an annotation that just controls where all the snow is so we're gonna go to global operations again fill with layer um, frost and we're only gonna do that on only on annotations white so that would put frost everywhere and then finally we need to put snow deep snow everywhere so we're doing that only on white annotations and should lag for a bit and yep so if we go to annotations turn them off should show that we don't have any oh and I forgot to mention it also does black annotations wherever there isn't snow so you can also use that to your advantage if you need to so it is pretty nice um, the way it imports it but you just have to make sure you cover all those other colors with white or take note of that for later so I'm just gonna go file export this new minecraft map and do that it's gonna take a bit here and I'll get back once we're in the final map so now it's done exporting 
and we're just going to go into Minecraft real quick and load the map. So now that you're in the map, as you can see, it's the same snow map that I used for the intro. It's actually a different one that I exported, but it's the same map. I just re-exported it again. Um, snow goes up pretty high. It goes down pretty low. But this is just an example of what you can do with the snow and world machine. It's very, very uh, powerful in terms of like what it can do. Um, it makes quite beautiful looking snow. And I'm happy with the results. If you like this tutorial, please uh, like and subscribe for more like this. Um, I'm always messing around with World Machine and trying to figure out new ways to do stuff. So, yeah, probably be making more tutorials on various specific things like this in the future. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and goodbye.